It is late fall and the harvest is long over. Water is again being diverted to these fields, but not for growing crops. This flow is for nature. After rice harvest, we have left maybe three, four, five tons of rice straw still in the field. So years and years ago, rice farmers uh, used to burn it. And now we uh, flood the fields. Initially, it was done with the idea that we need to decompose the rice straw. But birds came, amazing amount of birds, millions of birds came to use the rice fields that were flooded for habitat and to eat the rice that was left. And it became an amazing opportunity to have a relationship with the environment in a very productive way. This reactivation of the floodplain is just one part of a much larger conservation project on Butte Creek. The 30-year effort has spawned an incredible rebound in native species, including threatened spring-run Chinook salmon. And all of it has been done without compromising water use or jeopardizing flood control. In fact, the changes on Butte Creek have made the water supply not less, but more reliable than ever before. I think this is such a perfect example of how we can all use the land for multiple benefit, for people, for farms, for birds, for fish. We are an example of how a resource can continue to work for different species and people included. The history of the Butte Creek region echoes the northern Sacramento valleys. Here, European immigrants found rich soils, a sunny climate, and plenty of water. It quickly became known as one of the richest agricultural regions in the nation. The first settlers that came here, they thought they were going to grow corn and wheat. They thought they could grow trees. And they got here and they found out this soil is clay. And when it rains, the soil is like glue. And when it's dry in the summer, the soil without water is like rocks. They couldn't grow wheat. They couldn't grow corn. They couldn't grow trees on this soil. This soil is rice soil. Butte County capitalized on its natural gifts to become the heart of California's rice industry. But the conditions so favorable in most years could also swing between brutal extremes devastating floods and cruel droughts. As farms and cities grew, so did the demand for reliable water supplies and flood control. On Butte Creek, multiple dams were built, along with a grid of levees. The reclamation projects effectively divorced the region's waterways from the surrounding floodplain, erased natural habitat, and blocked ancient migratory pathways. What was happening on Butte Creek was happening all over California. By the mid 20th century, every single river on the east side of the valley had been dammed, thousands of miles of levees built, and all but a tiny fraction of the state's wetlands were gone. Back on Butte Creek, water users began to notice trouble. In between the, the, the early 60s and the mid 90s, the returning fish were really low, it, like in the hundreds of fish returning. The populations were, were going down. So that was kind of a wake up to the to people that hated. Paul Ward worked for the State Department of Fish and Wildlife in the 1970s. His job was to monitor fish passage on Butte Creek. In general, there was inadequate flow during key times of the year, both for adults and juveniles. There were no fish screens, and during key times of the year, the water was cut off. And so there, the fish passage, both adult and juvenile, was, was, was terrible. It was only in a, in a very unusual year that you either got all the adults up or, or the juveniles out. Over the years, the fish never improved. We anticipated an eventual listing of the Spring Run Chinook under the Endangered Species Act. And if, you know, when and if that were to occur, it would change the way we, we had to operate in the district. The threat was so dire, the problem so complex, it begged a revolution in thought and practice. Collaboration. You can't do a project like Butte Creek any way other than collaboration. 
Uh, you can't regulate it, that's for sure. It's too complex, you need too many people uh, cooperating. You had the farmers partnering up with urban water agencies from LA. Uh, you, you also, we also partnered with state and federal governments, the, the people that typically regulate irrigated agriculture. And this was truly unprecedented because partnerships like that didn't exist back then. When people come together and say, we all want the same thing, can't we just find out what we have in common and work together? All of a sudden, new lights start to come on, new partnerships start to be formed, and all of a sudden, cooperation uh, breeds success, and success breeds success. Their main assault hammered at the dams. Led by Secretary of the Interior, Bruce Babbitt, they demolished a total of four dams opening up 25 miles of Butte Creek to unimpeded flow. The Western Canal Water District, the largest irrigator in the region, replaced its dams with an ingenious device. We decided to tunnel underneath Butte Creek. What that tunnel is technically called is an inverted siphon, but it's basically a tunnel. The remaining dams on Butte Creek were retrofitted with state-of-the-art fish ladders and screens. Flows were increased and monitored to meet new threshold levels. No longer would adult salmon be blocked from spawning grounds or juveniles flushed out to irrigation canals. Over the years, more than $60 million of modifications were engineered throughout the Butte Creek watershed. The response was immediate. The first year after our project, we had 20,000 fish return in the spring. Now, there's a sustaining population of, of six to 8,000 fish returning on average each year. And that's just a phenomenal recovery. A team from California Department of Fish and Wildlife is suiting up to survey this year's population. And they are looking at the condition of the fish. Um, if we find any dead carcasses, they'll take biological samples. But essentially, it's just monitoring the condition and health of the fish over the summertime. They usually go down head first. Everybody's been through some swift water rescue training. It can be pretty treacherous. I mean, the terrain is uneven, high flows. The adults that return have great conditions, so they're just hanging out all summer long in cool pools and waiting for fall time temperatures to cool down and they'll spawn the last week of September to about the end of October. Of the three waterways in California that still support spring run Chinook salmon, Butte Creek is by far the most prolific. The average return nowadays is about 8,000 which in many years amounts to 90% of the entire state's population. But this is not the end of the story. In some ways, it is just the beginning. Researchers from UC Davis and Caltrout are looking beyond the creek, past the levees, and out into the floodplain. There they are finding another key to salmon recovery. Food, lots of food. The floodplains are good for juvenile fish because they're basically food factories. And when the water spreads out, the food grows, the fish eat the food, and that's when the fish are growing big. In the river, there's just really not a lot of food, and there never was historically, and that's the reason why the floodplains are beneficial. We sample the water to understand what type of food will grow there. Temperature, pH, chlorophyll, and many other variables are measured and recorded across the watershed throughout the winter and spring. It's all part of finding the best recipe for what these field researchers call zoop soup. This thing is chock full of zooplankton. It's so full, it won't even drain out of there. There's so many zooplankton with little microscopic bugs, but those are what the fish are eating. Wow, a lot of fish food there. And we like to call it the zoop soup. Come on, fish. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go and get in the net now. We go out and sane fish in the natural environment to see how fish use it. Oh, this thing's filthy with salmon right now. And so we need to see which ones use the habitats at different times of the year to understand how, if we're gonna manage the system for these fish, how do we optimize it? How do we maximize the benefits that we can get out of it? It's a feisty one. Each fish gets a fork length, gets its weight taken, and we look at the condition of the fish. Uh, we also take a photo and look at the body proportions. What those measurements show is salmon from the flooded rice fields and wetlands within the Butte Creek watershed grow on average three times bigger and fatter than their peers confined to the rivers. 
That's a salmon. Yeah. Oh, it's a fat right. one too. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a spring run size one. Butte Creek is one of those places where we have learned a lot. And if you look at the population over the last 20 years of salmon in Butte Creek, I think you can see that that rise in the population has been a result of what we've learned. Oh, hey, look at that. The lesson of Butte Creek salmon recovery? Complex in detail, but simple in principle. Correct limiting factors like improving fish passage and reactivating floodplains. And natural systems will rebound. Come on, fish. The Butte Creek project transformed a creek that was a nightmare for spring run salmon to one in which now we get thousands and thousands of salmon back almost every year, even during drought. What was accomplished was moving a system from something that focused solely on supply for rice farmers that wasn't very good for the fish to a system that could work both for fish and for rice growers. It is early spring. Farmers all across this watershed begin the careful diversion of Butte Creek water onto their waiting fields. These flows signal the start of another production year. As waterways go in California, Butte Creek is modest, a mere hundred miles long. But Butte Creek carries an outsized story. From its headwaters, through the middle reaches, and out across the floodplain, water users have learned to manage this watershed as an interconnected whole for the benefit of both humans and nature. Many believe Butte Creek is the very definition of reconciliation ecology's promise of win-win. In my mind, the environment won, the farmers won, downstream water users win. So when we can come up with partnered solutions to complex ecosystem problems and still be able to maintain what we're doing, that is the definition of win-win. You probably could just add a lot more wins on that. Win, 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 win. I don't know if it's two, three, four, five wins. It's a win for the local farmers, huge win for the environment, and it was a win for the, for the state as a whole in showing a different, better way to go about ecosystem restoration than what we've been trying unsuccessfully for decades. The success, some call the miracle on Butte Creek, may be a potent model for reconciliation elsewhere in the Central Valley and beyond. The Butte Creek watershed is one of those really good examples it's where people come together and say, look, what we all want is the same thing. We want a healthy uh, ecosystem here. We want a healthy uh, Butte Creek. And frankly, Butte Creek uh, is the model because people are there working together to make sure that, that the water is not just for sole purpose. And that uh, is the way nature worked it. And man can coexist with nature if we understand not to try and fight her, but to work with her. For people, for farms, for birds, for fish, we are an example of how a resource can continue to work for different species, and people included. And it's a model that I hope can help inspire other regions and other organizations. If we can do it here on Butte Creek, then I absolutely believe that it can be done elsewhere. As the harvest winds down, farmers again prepare their fields for winter. Soon, the birds will return. So many, they will darken the sky. And newly hatched salmon will make their way out into the floodplain to grow fat before heading out to the ocean next spring. These flooded fields are the wetlands of yore. And while their laser-leveled, gravity-fed precision grids may look different than the ancient floodplain, they function in the same way. It is a modern version of the ancient cycle, a sharing of Butte Creek for the benefit of all the species that live here.